if your goal is to do 20 new homes, let's say, every month, what's stopping you from doing 200? If the challenge was in front of you to do 200, 10 times more than you were thinking, how would your tactics change around growth? Welcome to the Property Management Brainstorm Show with Bob Preston. Bob is the president, owner, and broker of North County Property Group, the fastest growing and top ranked property management company in North County, San Diego. This podcast is for property owners and investors who are considering hiring a professional property management company to manage their property assets. You'll hear from leading professionals on the best practices surrounding the San Diego rental market, what's involved in successfully renting your property, and how to make sure your property is managed correctly. Now, here is your host, Bob Preston. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash property management brainstorm and browse the incredible selection of audio programs. Right away, you can download a free title and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash property management brainstorm or just click through on the link provided in our episode notes to get started today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Property Management Brainstorm Show. I'm Bob Preston, your host, broadcasting from our studio at North County Property Group in Del Mar, California. If you're new here, please subscribe so you have ongoing access to all of our great episodes. And if you like what you hear, please pay it forward with a positive review. In today's day and age of high-performance companies such as Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and others, customers have come to expect only the best when it comes to an organization's service level. So why should property management companies be any different? And why shouldn't we, as property managers, have a service level agreement, otherwise called an SLA, as a mindset for our organizations? I have with me today, as a guest on the show, Ethan Lieber, CEO at Latchell, who I had the pleasure of hearing speak at the Cal NARPM conference last week about this very topic. Ethan, welcome to Property Management Brainstorm. Thanks, Bob. I'm really excited to be here. Happy to uh, share some stories and dig in. Cool. Hey, we got to see each other last week at Cal NARPM, where I learned a lot about you and your company. But for our listeners, I think a good place to start is always to tell us about yourself and what's going on at Latchell. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think maybe the easiest way to explain what Latchell is all about is actually to ask a simple question of you. And that question is, how would you like to create a new revenue stream and never take a maintenance call again? Sounds good to me. (laughs) I I would hope that would be the answer, right? (laughs) What person in business doesn't want to create new revenue streams and streamline their workflows, right? Right. Um, And that's what Latchell does. We help property managers create new revenue streams and streamline that maintenance workflow specifically. And how did you get into it? How did you come up with the idea for Latchell and, and you know, what's your background and how did you get into uh, the business? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can explain my background by way of actually talking about the Latchell founding. It's a relatively interesting story like any company's founding. And it maybe starts from a very classic place. It started actually in a dorm room my freshman year of college, which is where I met my co-founder, Will. So the two of us went to UC Berkeley. That's where I met him. And um, that kind of was the start to this path where we eventually created Latchell. Of course, the actual founding of Latchell came about a decade later. But I studied economics in college and went into uh, software product management after school. So I spent a whole bunch of time building mobile applications and web applications, a lot of which actually connected contractors to homeowners that were doing renovation and remodel work. So I had a good, a good amount of experience in that network building and, you know, job delivery to, to contractors. And Will had actually gone into supply chain management. So if anyone's actually like an operational kind of savvy entrepreneur, you may have heard of things like Six Sigma process design, yeah, sure. things like that. Of course. Yeah. That's actually what he studied. And um, that took him to Amazon. And the real interesting part of the story here is he's at Amazon building their two hour, two hour delivery networks across the world when his grandfather retires from his management company. He, he decided to retire at the ripe old age of 92. So 
he had oh been managing goodness. this company <laughs> more than six decades. I, I hope Bob, that, that I hope you retire before ninety two because I, I plan on it. Let's hope so too. I'm, <laughs> I've got a ways <laughs> to go before I hit ninety two, but I think I do have a few years on you. Right, yeah, and and for me, I you know my dream was always like be a very successful entrepreneur so that you can retire early, <laughs> right? Now, whether mm -hmm. or not that actually happens, I don't know. I mean, I, I love business. I love being an entrepreneur, as I'm sure you do. And I can see why his grandfather did work until 92. But at 92, he says, all right, you know, it's time for me to settle down. <laughs> I'm going to spend some time vacationing. And so he retires and Will, my uh, co-founder at Latchell, ends up bearing the brunt of the burden managing that company. And this is while he's at Amazon. So it was a smaller management company of about 35 properties. And maintenance was really the big thing that was kind of always bogging him down. And because he was traveling internationally for Amazon, a daytime call here, even if it was noon, meant he might be having to take a call at midnight his time. And then when he got back into the States, of course, he has to worry about the midnight phone call with an emergency coming in. And it was just, it was a lot for him to handle. And that's when he contacted me for some help because he knew about the software I had been building. You know, we do do a little bit of research, see what solutions are out there. We don't really find much. And after talking to about 50 different management companies each, we noticed they were having the exact same problems. And that's when we dove deep and said, let's build a platform to help manage that maintenance operation. Because if we can take that off the property manager's plate, that's going to allow property management companies to focus on growth instead of focusing on like day in, day out maintenance. And even if it's not focused on growth, well, how can we help you focus on running turns faster? and doing value-add renovations. So the session you hosted that I got to see last week at CalNARPUM was using the Amazon model as a backdrop to what you call the SLA mindset. So now that explains why Amazon, why you use that as your model, because yeah. of your roommate and your partner now. But what do you mean mm -hmm. by the SLA mindset? Maybe you can explain that to our listeners. Yeah, uh, probably easiest for me to describe you know, why we call it an SLA mindset from top down. And it actually starts with these sort of foundational principles on which your company will operate. And for Latchel, we actually built those from Amazon. We pretty blatantly just stole their leadership principles because we loved them so much and because they were such a great foundation for Amazon. The most important of these being customer obsession. And then when you look at customer obsession, it all comes from these uh, service level agreements. These service level agreements are the kind of service, the level to which you're providing it, that promise to the customer. It's the definition of what customer obsession is going to mean for your company. And so when I say SLA mindset, really what I'm talking about is putting your entire company, your whole service design, the whole operation into that mindset of what does the customer want and what are the checkpoints where we can validate if they're getting what they want? So uh, Jeff Bezos actually has a, a really cool quote. Um, he says, start with the customer and work backwards. I've kind of been talking a lot about like, what, you define what the customer wants and you back in to what that service level agreement is going to be, right? Is the SLA in, in most companies published or is it purely an internal metric? It can be both. You know, one of the guiding principles at Latchel is transparency. And it's one of the things we actually believe is what every customer of ours wants, whether it's the property manager we're working with or the tenant we're working with. People want transparency. And actually, I mm -hmm. think uh, in the real estate space in general, not even just property management, it, it's been hard to create transparency. And a lot of the companies you're seeing now that are excelling in customer service part of why is because they're delivering transparency. So it is important. And the reason it's important too is when you can set that service level agreement and make it known to your customer, that's when you're going to have the most opportunity to exceed the expectation and get that positive review. Hey, previous to starting my property management business, North County Property Group, I was in the telecom industry way back when uh, with a company called Polycom and also some um, wireless companies. And from the perspective of a high tech company, in particular telecom company, it was a pledge of uptime. You know, you're you're going to be up. Ooh. We use the term five nines, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. This is yeah. a kind of a technical or reliability SLA, 
But for property management companies, it's a little bit different. It's almost a guarantee or a promise of human performance. Is that how you would classify it in this context? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it, it can be either of those things. It, as long as it's measurable, that's what's important. The SLA has to be measurable, needs to be metrics-based, and you need to be able to effectively monitor it. One of the things that I have always found interesting about property management and being in this business is that we, we think of ourselves as having three different categories of stakeholders. One category is our property owners, our clients, uh, the individual investors, whatever, you know, that category of property owners. Second is our tenants, and the third is the vendors. And Ooh. I suppose there, there could be SLAs that kind of go across all three kind of with some common themes. What would some of those be? I mean, I think we're already talking about some of that, but are there any common themes that run across? Yeah. So, you know, Jeff Bezos, I'm going to go back to Bezos. We, we love Jeff Bezos over here at Lateral, but um, he says like, as you're, you're kind of backing into what customers want, you actually want to focus on the things that don't change. And that, it, that's a really good framework for understanding what is everyone, all these stakeholders you're working with, what do they want? Focus on the things that don't change about what they want. Everyone wants to feel like they're cared for and loved, right? So how do you set up SLAs that create the feeling that we care about you? Like the biggest reason a tenant will usually leave a bad review is they feel like you don't care about them. Biggest reason an owner is going to leave is they feel like you didn't care about them. Uh, we, I actually mentioned this in that um, Cal Narpum workshop that you saw yeah, last week. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 74% of both owners and tenants, so your clients and the tenants will leave for the same reason. 74% will leave because they feel like they had poor service. And a lot of that comes down to, did you create this feeling about caring for them? So like when we kind of go to that abstract level, like you can kind of categorize these things that way. People want to be cared for. They want, they want to feel that working with you is convenient, right? They don't want to feel like there's hurdles all over the place. Like every month I need to reach out to get that statement. It's not convenient, right? Yeah. Should be automatic and it should be consistent. Yeah. It should be consistent. Consistency is key. You can apply it to maintenance too on the tenant side. Like it's not convenient if you have to put in the same request multiple times. You want to put it in once and be communicated with to know that it's you know moving along. And actually, tenants care less that the thing gets done fast. They care a lot more that during the process of getting it done, they feel cared for. What I'd like to do is you mentioned the three different groups and kind of the consistency required. Let's focus on maintenance now for a minute, uh, work order sure. generation, vendor dispatch, because... This is a huge part of keeping all three of our stakeholder groups, particularly the tenants and the owners, but you know, vendors fall into that too as one of our stakeholders. And this is the area where Latchell really specializes. So what I was hoping we could do here, Ethan, is dive into some of the basic stages of maintenance or the checkpoints, if you will, of what the maintenance workflow looks like and where there might be measurable outcomes around which we could possibly form SLAs. Yeah, maybe a good way to approach this would be to walk you through what a flow looks like if a tenant's doing maintenance and the lateral's coordinating it. And in yeah. that process description, I can stop and talk about like the SLAs we have. And then, okay. you know, anyone listening, you could take those checkpoints and apply them to your own flow, whether or not you're using lateral, that, that doesn't matter. But the checkpoints are what, what's really important here. Perfect. So, you're always going to kick off that maintenance flow with the, the request that comes in. And that request can come in in a couple ways. With Latchel, most of the time, it's going to be called in or texted in. right? So the tenants all have a dedicated line for maintenance. Or sometimes they'll actually call like the, the main office. And if you have an IVR, right, you can transfer them to that dedicated Latchel line. So when they call in, that's, that's the first interaction. We pick up the phone in 60 seconds. I've talked a lot about that one. And the reason I talk a lot about, about that one is your first response time to the inbound request is actually one of the most important factors in getting a positive review later. If a tenant has to wait you know, even 10 minutes, I mean, even five minutes, you know, we're such an instant gratification like lifestyle now. It's like no one wants to wait a second for anything, right? So our next checkpoint here is actually our capability on troubleshooting. And this actually isn't so much an SLA for the tenant as an SLA for any owners. Because for the owner, it's really important that you're capable of de-escalating emergencies and troubleshooting to fix things on the phone. Because if you don't have to dispatch someone, that means you've saved money. Obviously, that increases the NOI, the net operating income, 
of the property and that's good for the owner right so you receive the request and at that point you're going to have a different flow for an emergency issue versus a non-emergency of course for emergencies sure. and actually for the normal requests and emergencies one of the things you can do at this point is set slas based off the type of problem and generally when you set these slas you, you want to look at time to get the maintenance appointment booked unless it's actually a property damaging emergency, then it actually becomes important. When can you actually get the person out to work on that fix? And so for property damaging emergencies at Latchell and a lot of our customers will have a two hour SLA for that. Within two hours, you need to have someone booked heading over to that property to fix that thing that could be causing property damage. This would be like leaks. It could, could also be like serious safety hazards for the tenant. So that you'd want any of those to be a two hour. SLA. There are going to be a whole other set of emergencies that won't cause like imminent damage to the property, but there's still emergencies that will cause damage if not addressed soon enough or be safety issues. And for those, you generally are going to want to set the 24 hour. And some in some states and counties, there will actually be 24 hour laws around certain types of maintenance issues. Mm-hmm. Now, for anything that's not an emergency, that's a normal request, what we like to do is say, we will have that appointment booked within five days. And the reason we say five days, generally you're not actually gonna wait five days to have the appointment booked, but the reason we say that is if a tenant's on vacation or a tenant's not being responsive, you're gonna have that like slack time. So mm-hmm. you wanna give yourself some time to actually get that appointment booked. Now right. you, it's you on your it's on your radar, you're talking to the tenant, you're talking to the vendor, but getting it connected and actually somebody to the property can take a few days sometimes. Now, the next best checkpoint in this process, and whether you're using software to help with this or not, it's absolutely something you should do, is know when that appointment is going to wrap up. So if if you're manually kind of sending out your technicians and vendors, at least know when they're going out to have that job done, because you should be reaching out to your tenant when that appointment finishes, confirming that their issue was fixed, and then collecting a review from them. This is your best opportunity to get a positive review. So we actually have an SLA to property managers we work with that their average review from tenants will be 4.5 out of 5 stars. Our actual average is 4.7 out of 5 stars on all tenant reviews. But, you know, whether you're using Latchel to do it or not, check in with a tenant at this point because this is your best opportunity to get a positive review. You just finished something that you said you would finish for the tenant unless you did a poor job meeting your SLAs during this process, the tenant's going to give you a positive review. They're going to say, yep, uh, my property manager did exactly what they said they would. The job got done. Thumbs up. And then you can take that review and have it go onto your social media pages. And that creates good like brand reputation management. Property management brainstormers. Have you heard of Square? I've been using Square to run payments through my business and thought you would be interested in it too. You can do a lot with Square, accept credit cards, power your business with a free point of sale app, get real-time sales reports, and much more. All this with no sign-up costs or long-term contracts. It's perfect for property managers and landlords who want to accept payments of credit cards in the field with their smartphones. Plus, if you follow this link in my episode notes, your first 1,000 in credit card transactions are processed for free when you sign up for Square. Square has really helped my business, so try it for free today. Hey, so look, full disclosure, we're one of your clients. If you fit in with other companies like North County Property Group, kind of walk us through how that works. How do you how do you plug in with us from a practical standpoint? Uh, the call comes in, the email comes in. How do you guys get it? How do you jump in and take over? And kind of what happens from there? Just sort of at a high level. Oh, yeah. So part of this depends on what platform you're using. So it's going to work a little bit different if you're on Rent Manager, where we have an API integration versus like WDM or Propertyware or Appfolio, or if you don't have a system, um, which believe it or not, like we, we actually have quite a few customers that aren't actually using you know, one of the, the big management softwares. So a lot of it depends on what platform you're using. And our customers kind of span the board on what they use. So it, it doesn't really matter what you're using. Lateral can plug in, in in sometimes different ways, but it can plug in with your setup. 
Now, the uh, probably the most important things to just mention are every customer that signs up for Latch, they're getting a dedicated number, and that, that number is basically the assistant line for the tenants. And they can call that number, they can text that number. When a customer starts with us, they can pass that number out. In addition to that, you can actually configure your phone system to route like any call from the tenants to that line. Or a lot of, a lot of our customers will do is they'll say, you know, for, for maintenance issues, press two. And when that tenant presses two, it comes to Latchel. And we're processing that depending on the system you're using. Sometimes like when we intake the thing, it just is going to load right into your system. Other times, like if, if we're not patched in to your software, then some of our customers, what they do is they'll take the real-time email notifications we send them and just pop them in the next day for normal requests, right? So it kind of depends, again, what you're using. We also like it. So we can also work the other way where if a tenant actually goes into an existing portal you have, we can set up the portal to actually send those requests right to Latchel. And then Latchel picks up that process from there. Generally, though, for emergencies, you really don't want them using your existing portal because none of the existing maintenance portals for any of the big softwares do a great job triaging and really understanding the issue. So generally, for emergencies, you actually are much better off having them go straight through the lateral line rather than going into a portal first because it's really easy yeah, for those things to mistake things as normal requests. That's how we have it set up. It's the after hours. We have the after hour service with you guys where, hey, if you're having a yeah. an emergency, please press one or whatever it is. And they connect basically to our line with you and you guys take over from there. Um, and then I'm assuming there's some sort of notification process. If there is an emergency, something going on at a property, the property management team needs to know about it. How do you guys handle that side? So, Bob, are you telling me that you're not the one that's receiving all the real-time notifications? Is it someone, I, uh, someone else well, on your some, team? actually, believe it or not, I still take call every third weekend. So sometimes I am. You never know <laughs> right who you're going to get. Okay. So <laughs> warn, your, cool. warn your team. You may, get, you may get the big cheese with Bob. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to let them know. But yeah, it, it, more or less like, yes, we, anytime something comes in, real-time email notifications go out as we're actually troubleshooting issues and updating the status on those. You're getting real-time email notifications. Um, you can also be logged in to Lapsal's portal where you'll see all this stuff happen in real time. Like, of course, like we don't expect anyone to actually just be sitting by their email, refreshing, getting those notifications, or sitting in the portal point of these is so that when you actually look, like come in the next day and you open your email, you, you'll see everything that happened, you know, while you were away. Now you mentioned a portal. So that I kind of know the answer to this. So I'm asking some of these questions is kind of teeing it up for you because I want our listeners to understand. So that kind of has a connotation of having a, a software platform that people are signing into. So Latchel not only is a service that you're answering phones and dispatching and things like that, but you're doing it through a software platform, correct? Maybe can you tell us about that a bit? Yeah, that's right. I like to kind of describe us as a tech enabled service. Like fundamentally, like software doesn't solve this problem. You need to solve it with people as well. Property management, it's always going to be a people business. Maintenance coordination, it's a people business, but you can use software to support that and create a huge amount of transparency in the process. So for a lot of our customers using us for emergency services, they're really not logging in that often. But when you do log in, you basically see an entire history of the work orders that have come in. One of the cool things is when you access any of the work orders in the software, you're actually seeing all the text communication, email communication, and calls that happened for that work order. So you can literally go in and listen to the troubleshooting calls on any of these issues that have happened. Also, when you log into the portal, that's where you can modify some of like the rules and configurations. So you can sure. like change your vendor priorities. Uh, we work out priority system for vendors. So you might say, you know, plumber A is first for plumbing, plumber B is second, and then for drain clogs, you know, a different plumber should be first. You can get really customized like that. So you can log in and change those settings. You can log in and change like who the escalation points are and you know, all that stuff. So all the rules around your your setup, you can change in there. Tell us about yeah. the different service levels you have. I mean, and I don't mean service level agreement, but you subscription, right, I guess right. would the be the better, the better term. Services, yeah. yeah, I think you have three different subscription levels, as I remember. So we have the emergency side, of which there are two flavors. So a lot of folks like uh, you, Bob, right? You're using us for just the after hours stuff. 
at this Any point, daytime calls, still good correct, to correct. Well, uh, daytime yeah. calls during normal business hours as of today. Right. Yes, that's true. This is a daytime call on Christmas. Latchell's going to handle that for you, right? That's right. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have that. Uh, we call it after hours. Like we have that version of emergency service. And then we have a 24 seven version of it where we would actually take all of the calls even during business hours. And in, in these cases, like Latchell's handling coordination end to end for emergency stuff, but all the normal requests, you're getting those uh, notifications. Hey, we got this normal request. You know, it's, then it's up to you, Bob, and, and your team, right, to coordinate that. Latchell's mm-hmm. not going to touch that normal request. Correct. And then we have the, the final service. It's our full service where we're handling all the emergency stuff and then the normal requests. And I just want to say, like, a lot of this stuff we're handling – it's your kind of in out maintenance. Um, we're not uh, handling like project management work, right? We're not coordinating through home warranties. We're not handling you know, project management for unit turns or things like that. Ethan, I always like to ask my guests as we wrap up to tell us a quick story, if you will. <laughs> this gets kind of personal. So hopefully it's something you're willing to share, something about yourselves. Maybe it's something that was a big impact in your life, either personal or professional. And is there a story you're willing to share with us today? Yeah. So I, I maybe make this, we'll make this a little more thematic. And I think it comes down to the importance of like grit and perseverance. And I'll start with like my first interaction here around this. So the first job I ever had, I was actually working for my father. He was a real estate agent. So I was in high school. And my dad put me on the phones and said, you're going to make a hundred calls to expired listings every day and book me appointments to go relist the home. And so that's like, that was the first time I, I ever really liked did any kind of meaningful work, right? Tough job. That's a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> tough job. I was like 15 when I started this. By 18, I had like three years of just like cold calling owners to relist their home. Some funny stories there. And, you know, in, in, in that kind of environment, you're going to get 95 screw yous. You'll get five people talking to you. And hopefully one of them says, yeah, sure. You know, I'll meet with them to see if it makes sense to relist. You know, and that kind of set the course for where my focus would be. But the point of this is to say it was building that grit and perseverance where I think it put me in a position to realize that I was capable of doing entrepreneurship. Because I think anyone listening to this that, that runs a management company knows how hard it can be to be an entrepreneur. Every day, you're climbing an uphill battle. Um, and at some point, you hope like it feels like you're gliding downhill. But you also probably know intrinsically that as soon as you feel like you're on the downhill climb, does that mean you're actually missing something, right? Does that mean actually you've gone, you've gotten comfortable and now someone else is going to pass you, which kind of took me actually into at one point getting really into boxing. So I don't know if you watch boxing, but I actually really love watching older YouTube videos of Muhammad Ali fights, Joe Frazier. Oh like my George gosh, those are classics, fights. sure. Yeah, the absolute classics. And my favorite is actually the series of Ali Frazier fights. And, you know, Muhammad Ali's like this amazing individual, like defined what it meant to be a boxer. But I was always most impressed by Frazier because this guy would just take punch after punch. And it was just grit and persistence that got him through every fight he had with Ali. And he was never knocked down. And to me, like, that's what it means to really be an entrepreneur, to not get knocked down. And if you do get knocked down, you get right back up and you keep charging forward. That was like how Frazier fought, you know? And I think like the point of this is to say, like it became about grit building. Only last thing I want to say here, Latchell is a Y Combinator back company. They're an accelerator in Silicon Valley. In the first week going through Y Combinator, this is for Latchell. We sat down with the group partners and they ask you what your goals are every two weeks for the business. And for Latchell, we wanted to grow a thousand units every two weeks, which sounds like crazy, right? Like how are you going to add a thousand units into the maintenance like, platform every two weeks? And Aaron Harris, who was our partner at Y Combinator, looked me dead in the face when I said a thousand units. And he said, if you're only growing a thousand units every two weeks, you will fail as a business. 
I think a lot of people would hear that and be like, oh, I can't do this. But having like that grit building, the response is the exact opposite. I, I mm-hmm. basically in my head was refined to say, you're right. If we're only doing a thousand units every couple of weeks, the company will never be where I want it to be. So I need to find a way to eventually be able to move this business to the needle of 10,000 units every two weeks. How can I do 10,000 units? Now, our business is way different than most property managers. The property management company would be like unthinkable to be doing 10,000 units every couple of weeks. Of but course, I would challenge everyone listening to say, if your goal is to do 20 new homes, let's say, every month, what's stopping you from doing 200? If the challenge was in front of you to do 200, 10 times more than you were thinking, how would your tactics change around growth? And I think you can kind of use that, that experiment in more areas than just growth. You can probably use that when you're coming up with SLAs as well. Good stuff. Hey, thanks for sharing. And kind of motivational to me right there too, Ethan. I mean, you, you're leaving me with some words of wisdom that are quite motivational to go back and look at my business in those same, those same ways, kind of the stair-step approach. If, you're, if your company is at a lull or things seem to be easy for a while, then maybe it's time to uh, start looking around and saying, okay, what's next? You know, what do we tackle next to take this to the next level to bump it up? Good stuff. Hey, I'm having a great time talking to you, and we could go on talking about this all day. I love it, and it's uh, been super interesting. But just because of the time point here, we need to wrap up today's episodes. And uh, I guess last remaining thoughts, any words of wisdom for our listeners about Latchell and how you could help them with their SLAs? And if someone wanted to learn more about Latchell and get in touch with you, how would they do that? Yeah, I think the only piece of advice I can give, and maybe it relates to the whole focus on like perseverance and grit, is I think the biggest thing that blocks a lot of management companies from going beyond what they believe they can do is fear. Um, there's this awesome line from the book Dune, which is fear is the mind killer. And that's absolutely true in, in most businesses. And I see it a lot in our property management customers. Fear can stop you from achieving a, a lot of what you want to get to. And that can be fear of increasing prices. It can be fear of charging tenants for added services. But if you let fear hold you back, I'm going to say it the same way Aaron Harris has said it to me, looked me dead in the face and said, you're never going to get to where you want to be. Uh, so the, the only, only thing I want to like impart everyone with is don't let fear be the mind killer. There's no reason to be afraid to experiment and try new things. And you're not going to get better by staying the same. Don't let fear stop you from charging what you're worth. And don't let fear stop you from charging for better services because people are willing to pay for it. And if you want to get in touch, you can actually email me directly. My email is ethan at latchel.com, L-A-T-C-H-E-L.com. But if you don't want to talk to me, you can talk to anyone else at Latchel by just going to latchel.com and clicking any of the buttons on our homepage. It'll direct you to a calendar to book some time with us. Cool. Hey, I love it. Good episode. And thank you so much for being on the show. It's, it's great information. And I think our listeners will really appreciate the time you took today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Bob, it was like an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope uh, one day we can get you to come on to the Latchel podcast. Absolutely. Would love to. I can uh, share my experiences as uh, one of your, you know, one of your clients, one of your, one of your subscription holders. Hey, well, listen, as we wrap up today, I'd like to make another quick plug to our listeners to click on the subscribe button and give us a like, if you will. Please pay it forward with a positive review to help encourage more great guests like Ethan to come on our show. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you for joining the Property Management Brainstorm Show. Until next time, we will be in the field working hard for our clients to maximize their property value and rental income and maintain top tenant relations. And we'll catch you next time.